Car Keys is a bidding tile placement, resource management, and meeple movement game for two to six players and takes about 45 minutes to play. The objective in Car Keys is to build that theme park you've always wanted to create, but your mom told you not to. For some, it will be a roller coaster water park. For others, it is an entirely food themed park. But there's a catch income. That accursed income. Every component you add to your theme park, you must purchase. And every component you add to your theme park, has a path that needs to match up with a previous component, as well as three values that tie in directly to your income. The three values on each component are allure, profitability, and satisfaction. The lowest of those three values is your income for the round. Victory points are earned through money, component points that some components may or may not have, parky points, you get a point for each parky meeple that stands on a component of a matching color, track points, points are earned at various levels on those tracks, and unique component points for each different color park component added to your park. Sum those up and the high score wins. The game is set up by giving each player a game mat and placing the middle game mat in the middle of the table. Each player chooses a color, the players get three cubes, a bidding pawn, and a money tracking marker of the player's choice of color. All money tracking markers are placed at the 20 spot of the middle game mat. All of the components are shuffled and placed to the left of the spot indicated. The player to have last been to a theme park goes first. The first player flips over the top tile of each attraction and places it on the middle game mat. Then the first player places his pawn to the right of the attraction of his choice. The next player clockwise now has a turn to either outbid the first player or choose another attraction to bid on. For the sake of explanation, let's assume that the player also chooses the same attraction to bid on. The next player clockwise will now bid. This player chooses to go to the parky pool. The parky pool allows a player to get a parky meeple from the stock of them on the central game board and gives them a $3 boost to their money on hand. The last player in our four player game now chooses to outbid the second player's bid. The first player now takes takes another turn, and as the price has gone up several times, now opts for the medium attraction for a less expensive cost. The second player really wants the small attraction, so he bids the highest. The third player is still at the parky pool, so he does not bid again, and the fourth player must bid on the medium attraction, the other small attraction that nobody has bid on, or the parky pool. The fourth player chooses to select the small attraction that nobody is currently out on. With all bids completed and no bids contested, the players, in turn order, now decrease their money accordingly, paying for their properties and receiving the tiles that they purchased. Players now place their tiles on their personal maps. Remember, when players place their tiles, they cannot be moved after they have been placed, only destroyed, and players need to attempt to connect all four of their entrances. If a player buys a dead end or places a piece such that the path makes it difficult for them, it could very well cost them the game. Now the players update their tracker values. Although each of the purchased components increase the value of either the profitability allure or satisfaction, no attraction gave players all three stats a boost, so all players earn $5 the minimum. The money trackers are moved accordingly. After income is received, players now move either two parky meeples one space or two spaces with one parky meeple. As only the third player has a parky meeple, but no attractions, this step is skipped for the first round. Now players receive parky meeples. The only rule is that the parky meeple must match an attraction that is on your personal game map. As player 3 chose not to grab an attraction, he doesn't have an attraction and therefore cannot obtain a parky at this time. These parkies are placed immediately into the park on any attraction connected to an entrance. Now let's stop here before we go into round 2. What is the point of parkies? Well, as mentioned earlier, matching parkies to attractions based on their color equals points, limited to one per attraction. But parkies also help you monetarily in three different ways. You can trade a parky in for $5 at any time during the game. You can get a continual $2 discount on attractions of the same colors of your parkies. That is a $2 discount per parky, so they can stack up. So having six yellow parkies would get you a $12 discount on yellow attractions. And the final way parkies help is that a parky can be discarded to trump another player's bid. That is to say, if you are bidding on a blue attraction and the top bid has already been placed, discarding a parky will allow you to displace their bid with yours at the top of the bid tree. 
This can be contested against if a player discards, say, two blue parkies, and you could contest that by discarding three parkies and so on. The game ends when there are no more parkies in the parky pool, or a player has connected all four entrances on their player mat. Points are tallied and the player with the highest points has built the best and most loved theme park. Hello and welcome back to Gamers Remorse. Today we're doing something a little bit special. This is a preview of a game coming up on Kickstarter this week. In fact, by the time you see this, it's probably out there. So check it out. The game's called Parkies. It's by the uh, gentleman who actually run GameCraft. And, um, it's, it's a really cool, I want to say, Uwe Rosenberg meets uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. And that's how I pitched it to you guys, but I'm mm -hmm. curious, what, what games would you compare it to? Uh, I think right off the bat, uh, Steam Park was mm -hmm. uh, one that really kind of came into mind with the, the fitting of, of tiles in a, in a manner, uh, as well as kind of bidding for, yeah. for certain things. Attractions. Yeah. And when you have the same tile placement, you have similar bidding, but they definitely are two separate games. Uh, the mechanics are quite separated from each other. There would be room in a yeah, They're two both. very different games and play very different. I would say if you like Steam Park, you should give this a try. The reason I like this game is uh, Eric and I were talking uh, while we were setting up the camera equipment. Is this is a game that you can enjoy actually losing at? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously everyone's trying to win, but you're having a lot of fun building a park, you know, and trying to figure out what goes in your park, how you're gonna lay out your park to try and get the proper carnies, not carnies, parkies, <laughs> into the uh, specific locations you want to get them in. There's, you know, four entrances, and you're you're laying it out appropriately to try and um, get the people in the right places. It was very interesting. At the same time, you're trying to balance your allure, your profitability, which I was never very good at, and your satisfaction um, by buying these different things. Meanwhile, you're fighting the jokers you're playing against over those constrained resources. It was very entertaining. Yeah. Um, so this game actually comes with really nice tiles. Mm -hmm. Super thick, very cool. Uh, game Crafter sometimes does uh, you know thinner... I don't know what you would call them, cardstock kind of, but this is very nice tiles, uh, tile quality here. Also, the number of meeples that come in here is kind of amazing. It reminds me of Five Tribes, you know, when yeah. you open up that and you're just like, what are all these pieces? Yeah. That's exactly what this is. I mean, that was my first thought, like when I just point out these meeples, it's just like, it's like Five Tribes. Mm -hmm. It's like Fantasy Flight made a Euro game. <laughs> Not to name drop, right? Not to name, <laughs> Not to name drop. <laughs> what do you think about the overall mechanics? I think you kind of dipped into it a little bit, but I'd like yeah. to hear more. Uh, I really liked the way the game worked in the act of the bidding process. It wasn't mm -hmm. something as simple as, I'd pay five for that, and someone else saying, I'd pay ten. It's bidding meets worker placement, almost. Um, in that you place your single worker um, to mark your bid, and then other mm -hmm. people can potentially bid over you if there is available spaces. Or if they have a parky that can knock you off the bidding ladder, essentially. Right. Um, and I thought that mechanic was really clever and ingenious. I haven't seen something like that before, and I really liked the way that played out. Yeah, it was interesting how they actually used the parkies as both a way to score more points, mm -hmm. but also as a benefit to you getting other certain things. Yep. So you mentioned the discount. You also mentioned uh, you know knocking people off mm -hmm. their bid placement. Um, and then, of course, there was the cashing in for, yep. the, for the five bucks. Yeah. So it was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I liked how everything was very unique, too. You yeah. Know? And then they, they kind of paired up what the item was along with their stats. Yep. Yeah. Right? So, guess your age probably isn't the most fun thing. There's not a, a lot of allure there. Yeah. But it's a moneymaker. You yeah. Know? That or popcorn and, you yeah. know, little events like that. Whereas a giant roller coaster, you're not making any money, to be honest with you. But... But it gets people allure. in the door, right? Yeah, it gets people in the door. So high allure, some satisfaction there for the thrill seekers. It it worked very well together. Yeah, another really cool thing about this game, um, and also something you should be aware of, should you buy this, I recommend buying this, but should you buy this, um, it plays up to six players. Not a lot of games do that right out right of the box. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a handful out there, obviously. I can mm -hmm. name ten off the top of my head. But it, it's good to know that. And in fact, it plays better the more you have. Um, there's a two-player variant. Um, 
just so they could support two players. But honestly, three player is better than two player because they, they had to trim it down somewhat so they could constrain the number of things people were bidding on. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be, all right, I'll take left, you take right every time, you know. So um, they, they made it so when you flip a, a tile, uh, both people bid on that, a two player. And a three player, you have three different things going on and sometimes, you know, nobody picks any of them. Um, and then with four player, the, the map actually expands, and I'll probably yeah. explain that in the in the first part. But that was really interesting as well because there's a there's an aging feature now, right? Yeah. At six players, you could technically get a small attraction for free yeah. for the price of zero. So uh, that that's really cool. I didn't I haven't been able to play it with six players, but just just know that the game gets better the more players that are playing. Which by the way, every time I say parky, I, I fight off a. Uh, Strange Irish dialect, like uh, what's his name from Snatch? Oh, Brad Pitt. Uh, Brad Pitt's yeah. uh, Parkies. The, uh, the Pikey. <laughs> show, show me the Parkies. I really mm -hmm. like the art. Yeah. I mean, it, like like Eric mentioned, like the pathing system, it, it was genius. But also, you know, you're not sitting here trying to go, all right, is that a path? Is that not a path? Like, it was very obvious what was and wasn't a path. Yeah. Uh, the way they laid that out was fantastic. Um, then they even add fun little things like chairs and garbage cans. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's played Roller Coaster Tycoon knows the importance of keeping your chairs not broken. <laughs> and, and keeping your park clean. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so uh, Sean, what about pacing? How do you think the game played out time-wise? Uh, so what's very interesting about this game is you're constantly doing things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other games that maybe move faster, but don't always keep you proactive in what's happening. Yeah. Very rarely was I like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to sit here and wait for you guys to make your decision. Because your bid directly affects yep. what I'm doing and yep. what I'm planning on doing. Also, what parky you pick affects me. I mean, pretty much everything you do or either of you yeah. did directly affected what I was capable of doing. Yeah. So I was constantly doing things. So I would say the pacing in that regard worked very well, I would say. And there's a lot packed in here. Mm -hmm. you, you don't really think about that at first, but I mean, as you get into the strategy, there's just a ton going on, leading to it seemed to move quick, even though I think yeah. playtime was about 45 minutes, probably, an hour. Probably yeah. a good 45 minutes. Once we figured it out, I mean, it, yeah, it played very fast and there's a ton of strategy packed in here. I wouldn't call it a heavy Euro, it's more mm -hmm. like a light medium. Yeah. I'd go that route, but it, it's it's border, It's getting towards the gateway game for the Euros. Um, what about replayability? What do you think, Brian? I think this game is very replayable. Okay. Uh, we finished a game, and then you were like, pretty much instantly, hey, let's, let's go again. Uh, you know, you wouldn't play this game eight hours in one day. Well, you wouldn't. Eric might, but yeah, I, I it, might it's a game. You know, I, I mean, would play like maybe a couple games, but then I'd be like, you know, what? I, I want something like super heavy. I think the the it's so interchangeable. There's so many different things that can happen. Uh, ver, the, the variables are are countless. So mm -hmm. each gameplay is going to be completely different. Like I've played this game with three different groups so far, and every time people have said, all right. Can we play again? <laughs> because it almost seemed to take no time, even though it was close to like 45 minutes, yeah. an hour. Um, but you learn enough that you now want to try new strategies, which yeah. isn't uncommon in games. But in this game, it seems to be so quick, yet immersive, that people usually want to play it a second time almost immediately. Yeah. Which is a sign of a great game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be available June 10th, which is a Wednesday. So check it out uh, on Kickstarter. Just go with it, you know? All right. Thanks, guys. Sneezing in three. I was over there when what? it happened. That's so. kind of off topic. Mm -hmm. Should start doing a, a looking for players thing, like on Craigslist or, you know.
Uh, Facebook. Like looking for players. Must play on camera. We need to worry about phrasing if we say looking for players. <laughs> Yo, dog. <laughs> I hear you looking for players. <laughs>